Before any newly installed piping can be placed in service, it must be thoroughly flushed and disinfected. The purpose of flushing is to remove any large debris that may have been deposited in the pipe during the construction process. And a satisfactory biological water quality test must be performed before the new piping can be placed in service. The most important parameter during the flushing process is the flow rate. A flow velocity of at least 2.5 feet per second should be maintained during the flushing process. If it is possible to achieve a higher flow velocity, 5 feet per second is preferred. The flushing operation should run long enough to allow for two or three line volumes of water to flow through the pipe to ensure a complete flush. The table can be used to determine the flow rate required to produce a 2.5 feet per second flow velocity based on the pipe diameter. The following table is an example of one such tool that can be used by an operator when flushing a newly installed water main. Now notice here on our chart, this is a chart that says the flow rate and number of hydrants required to flush pipelines and we're assuming 40 psi in the system. So we would find our pipe diameter and here let's look at an 8 inch pipe. So this 8 inch diameter pipe requires, if we move to the right, we see 400 gallons per minute to achieve our 2.5 feet per second flow rate. And as we continue moving to the right, we need at least one 2.5 inch hydrant to flush this system at that flow rate. And coming in, the size of tap that we need to allow for this flow rate is either a one 2 inch tap or we could use two one and a half inch taps. So what this chart shows us is for a given pipe diameter to achieve two and a half feet per second velocity it tells us how many two and a half inch hydrants we need and how many taps and what size the taps have to be if we're flushing at 40 pounds per square inch. The disinfection of water mains is usually accomplished using chlorine compounds and this comes in the form of calcium hypochlorite and sodium hypochlorite and these compounds are used for smaller pipelines or chlorine gas is used for larger applications. The chlorine must make contact with all interior piping surfaces during the disinfection process. The chlorine solution is usually injected into the system through a corporation stop nearest the connection point between the old and the new water main. During the disinfection process, it's important to ensure that the high chlorine concentration isn't leaking into the in-service water system. The AWWA standard C651 covering the disinfection of water mains should be consulted for the appropriate chlorine dosage. As a rule, you'll want to dose the new piping so that there is a residual of at least 25 milligrams per liter at the end of the section being disinfected. Care must be taken to not dose at an excessive chlorine concentration since this can damage mortar linings as well as brass fittings. To calculate the amount of chlorine to use for the disinfection process to achieve a 25 milligram per liter residual, the disinfection standard has charts to assist the operator. The following two charts are an example of these. Here looking at that same 8 inch pipe that we looked at earlier, we see that if we're using calcium hypochlorite granules, for each 500 foot interval of pipe, we need 6.7 ounces of calcium hypochlorite, which is equivalent to 200 grams of calcium hypochlorite. If we were using tablets instead of granules, we would use this chart. And this chart shows the number of 5 gram calcium hypochlorite tablets that are required to give us a dose of 25 milligrams per liter. Looking at that same 8 inch diameter pipe, and assuming we're working with 20 foot lengths of pipe, we see that for every 20 foot length of pipe, we need two calcium hypochlorite tablets. So to achieve our 25 milligrams per liter residual to disinfect an 8 inch diameter pipe for every 20 foot length, we add two tablets.